CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, the NTSB is in Baltimore. It is after a cargo ship slammed into a bridge overnight, causing it to collapse. It sent construction workers and vehicles into the water. Search efforts continue as federal investigators arrive at the scene. CBS News Miami's Ryan Hughes has the very latest. Search and rescue efforts for missing construction workers are still underway after the stunning collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in the middle of the night. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg and the NTSB are here at the scene. And what they're going to look at and begin to collect is information on vessel operations, safety history, safety record. The whole bridge just fell down. Video shows the moment a massive container ship struck support pillars of the critical overpass. John Zafia is a crane operator at the port and felt the impact from his nearby home. Just like an aftershock of an earthquake and a loud explosion. The crew aboard the 974 foot vessel notified state officials the ship had lost propulsion and that hitting the bridge was possible. There's a ship approaching and just lost their steering. Maryland's governor says that heads up helped save lives. We're thankful that between the May Day and the collapse that uh, that we had officials who were able to to begin to stop the flow of traffic. 12 million vehicles crossed Baltimore's Key Bridge last year and the port itself handled a record amount of cargo. It's not closed until further notice. President Biden promised federal aid. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. The president said 15,000 jobs depend on that port. That includes Zafia's. That's going to affect all of our work down there. Officials say the bridge was fully up to code. Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Baltimore County, Maryland. Right now at four, South Florida's Star Island is the center of an FBI raid. It is involving music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Agents also raided his home in L.A. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner is outside his Miami Star Island home with what we know right now. We now have a clue as to where Diddy has been. Take a look at this video provided to us by TMZ, where you can see Sean Diddy Combs pacing around outside of the Opelika Airport yesterday as feds were raiding his home here on Star Island. Witnesses told TMZ that Diddy was on board a private jet when Homeland Security rolled up. Officials confirmed the simultaneous searches are part of a possible sex trafficking investigation by federal agents in Combs' wealthy Miami Beach community, where other celebrities live. Neighbors preferred to speak off camera. Some say they're not surprised by the raid because of sexual assault lawsuits filed against Diddy in recent months. Last November, his former girlfriend, R&B singer Cassandra Ventura, better known as Cassie, filed a federal lawsuit alleging a long history of violence and abuse in the nearly decade-long relationship. She reached a settlement with Combs, while the entertainer denied any wrongdoing. Now, since then, Combs has been accused of sexual misconduct in five different civil suits, including his former music producer who said Diddy sexually harassed and drugged him and pressured him to hire prostitutes and perform sex acts. Now, Diddy's attorneys did tell CBS News that all of these allegations against him are pure fiction. As for any arrests, we have not seen Diddy himself here at his Star Island home. We have not seen any arrests here, but we do know at least two people were arrested at his California home. On Star Island, Morgan Reiner, CBS News. Miami. And Pompano Beach, the Broward Sheriff's Office says a teenage boy has died following a shooting. Happened yesterday afternoon in the 1800 block of Dr. Martin Luther King Boulevard. Deputies say they found the teen. He was taken to the hospital where he died. Three other people were also shot, but their injuries are not known. Authorities are still investigating what led up to the shooting. If you have any information, call BSO. Now to an update on a story that we brought you on CBS News Miami's quick cast yesterday. Popular ride at the Miami Youth Fair has been shut down. It's after a mechanical problem forced the operator to make an emergency stop. Happened Sunday afternoon while 10 people were on the 1001 Notches ride. North American Midway Entertainment operates the ride and all of the rides at the fair. They say once the ride operator noticed an issue, they immediately brought the ride back down to safety. 
we anticipate having the device tomorrow or the next day back ready for the state to take a look at it. Everything goes bad, unfortunately. It happened while people were riding it, but thank God nothing happened. And I'm not scared of bringing my children here. The ride will have to be re-inspected by the state before it operates again. Hurricane season still a couple months away, but it will be here before we know it. The National Hurricane Center conference is currently underway in Orlando. Storm experts predict it may be an above average season. They are urging urging residents to get ahead by prepping ahead. The 2024 hurricane season begins June 1st and runs through November 30th. You still have time to stock up, but the earlier the better. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside at downtown Miami, a beautiful shot. The sun is out, but there are some clouds still hanging around. Let's get right to Next Weather meteorologist Cindy Presser tracking what's ahead. How's it looking, Cindy? These clouds are not going to bother us with any rain today. They're very shallow and there's dry air just sitting above these clouds. So therefore, partly cloudy skies at times, mostly cloudy, but not a bad day. Overall, temperature did hit 82 degrees, but our temps are on their way up. This is what we expect. Showers with the next front that comes in on Thursday doesn't look like a lot of rain though. This one will zip through that just doesn't have a lot of energy with it at that point. And the dry and cooler air comes in just in time for Easter weekend. That's going to be lovely. Southeasterly winds today. You can see these little clouds coming in. They're moving quite quickly and there's no rain, although it looks like it. There's ground clutter showing up, but we've got a dry, dry conditions now at the surface and those winds gusting up to 26 miles per hour. Highest gust so far today was 28 mile per hour winds. So again, it's on the breezy side. That southeasterly flow is going to continue with us again tomorrow, south to southeast, and then we have some changes as behind the frontal system. We'll go back to a northerly flow. It'll be breezy on Friday, Thursday and Friday as well, but that cooler, drier air coming in, that's going to be really nice for the holiday weekend. Because of the breeziness, we still have a high current rip current risk this through Wednesday evening. Hallandale Beach, Miami Beach, Hallover Beach, South Beach, Key Biscayne, all the way down to ocean reef because of this onshore flow and these gusty winds. If you have friends that are not used to the beaches down here in Florida and they're not um, aware of that, you need to look for rip currents. You might want to let them know. Same thing for you. Be very careful with that. So here comes the next front tomorrow. High pressure scooting off to the east. So that's going to allow low pressure with this frontal system to move in. Winds will turn from south to southwesterly direction and be breezy on Thursday. Showers I think around middle part of the day, around noon, one o'clock in the afternoon, and then followed by clearing skies, high pressure moves back in, and that's the kind of stuff we're going to see all the way through the weekend. So really nice. Temperatures will be a little bit on the cool side though. So climbing right now, 84 on Wednesday, Thursday, 86 degrees, and that's with the clouds and those showers coming in, and then it drops beautifully Friday, Saturday, Easter Sunday. What a beautiful day that's going to be with a high of 80 degrees, and then temperatures start climbing again. We go back to that southeasterly flow. So here's your forecast. High tomorrow, 84 degrees. We'll just give it a teeny tiny chance for an isolated shower. It more than likely stays dry. 30% chance for some showers midday on Thursday, clearing out dry, dry Easter Sunday with a high of 80. Then warming trend kicks in again next week. All right, thank you, Cindy. When we come back, your billionaire dreams could still come true. The two massive jackpots still up for grabs next. Now to the latest on the crisis in Haiti. The effort to install a transitional presidential council was delayed. It's over concerns about one of its members. The presidential council will be responsible for choosing Haiti's new leader. The delay to establish the council comes as gangs continue to launch attacks across Haiti's capital. Here in South Florida, we expect to see more travelers arriving at Miami International Airport from Haiti later today. The Supreme Court heard arguments in an abortion case, and it could impact women across the country. The conservative-leaning court is considering whether the FDA overstepped when it made the so-called abortion pill easier to get. CBS News Miami's Natalie Brand is outside the Supreme Court with the latest. Hundreds demonstrated outside the U.S. Supreme Court during arguments on access to the abortion drug Mifepristone. We thought it was really important to support women and their right to obtain abortion safely. The number one premise for me is that chemicals should never be used to take innocent life. In 
2016, the FDA extended the window women can take mifepristone from 7 to 10 weeks. And during the pandemic, it said an in-person doctor's visit was not needed, allowing mail-order pharmacies to ship the drug nationwide. Aaron Hawley, who argued on behalf of some doctors opposed to abortion, says the FDA violated the law when it relaxed restrictions. It's particularly appalling. It, the FDA based its 2021 decision to remove that in-person visit on studies it acknowledged were, quote, not adequate. But FDA's ultimate conclusion was that mifepristone could safely be dispensed without in-person visits. It had voluminous evidence, I think, to support that conclusion in 2021, and there's been no contrary evidence that's been introduced. The government also argued the doctors who brought the suit don't have legal standing because they were unlikely to be harmed by the changes. Under federal law, no doctors can be forced against their consciences to perform or assist in an abortion, correct? Yes, we think that federal conscience protections provide broad coverage here. During arguments, both conservative and liberal justices focused on the issue of standing. Legal analysts say they appear inclined to side with the FDA. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the Supreme Court. The city of Margate has named an interim police chief. Michael Palm is stepping in for Joseph Galaska. Galaska announced his retirement last week. He was surrounded with controversy regarding inappropriate text messages. Palma is the interim chief, but a search is underway to find a permanent one. Palma has been with the Margate Police Department since 1995 and has been a major since 2022. Everyone is feeling the lottery fever and the jumbo jackpot continues to grow. No one won last night's jackpot. It now stands at an estimated $865 million. The next drawing is tomorrow night, but you don't have to wait until tomorrow for a big chance to win big. The mega millions jackpot drawing is tonight. That jackpot is now at $1.1 billion. Remember, you can get those winning numbers for both drawings right before CBS News Miami at 11 p.m. Best of luck to you if you're playing. That's the CBS News Miami QuickCast. I'm Nasha Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a wonderful day.